Research and innovation are essential to Europe's future. Economically, because new ideas are the best way to stimulate productivity, boost competitiveness and generate jobs. And socially, because new technology tools and new ways of using them could entangle our most intractable problems, from the environment to healthcare. And here in the EU, we are already supporting that investment. And that needs to continue. Imagine if we had chips that were ever smaller, ever more powerful, ever less energy intensive, with processors as tiny as a molecule based on quantum mechanism or biological systems. Imagine if we had smarter networks so everyone could get fast connections to the future internet. With internet information that actually answers your questions every time and billions of devices connected to the internet of things. Not just your computer and your phone, but your household appliances, your car, your fridge, your glasses. Imagine if robots could do the tasks that we find too difficult, dangerous or just plain dull. From nanorobots repairing tissues in your body to bomb disposal to the household cars. Imagine if the private sector could use photonics for manufacturing that's quick, customized and cheap. Or high performance computing to design and try out new ideas. Imagine if we had modernized online public administrations, giving citizens top quality, efficient services wherever they are in the EU, and tools that reinforce solidarity, democracy and human rights. Imagine if elderly people could stay in their own home for longer, active and independent. Imagine ICT implants giving hearing to the deaf, Artificial retainers giving sight to the blind, artificial limbs giving back sensation and control to those who have lost it, remote devices controlled by brain waves so you can make something happen just by thinking it. Imagine if we had systems to model the earth, the sea and sky to understand, predict and mitigate climate change. Imagine smart, environmentally neutral cities in a smart, environmentally neutral world. Imagine if scientists and engineers could conduct virtual experiments in silico, not in vitro. Whether they are designing new drugs or new aircraft engines, and if they had the tools to openly share their data and results so others could examine, compare and learn. A world where every citizen can be a scientist from the comfort of their own desk. Imagine a world where your favorite TV and favorite films were on demand, interactive, three-dimensional, instantly available from a locker in the cloud, wherever you are. Programs for entertainment or education, maybe even both at once. And that's what research and innovation can offer us. And we shall do it better if we act together to get European economies of scale. I want the research we fund under Horizon 2020 to be yet more challenging, with specific funds set aside for open, disruptive innovation, to be more coherent, with more links between our policy areas, and more focused on boosting our competitiveness, with lower administrative burdens, and with private sector experts and investors more involved from an early stage. So more bright ideas make it through to market, boosting our economy and helping as many people as possible. These are just the ideas we already know about. None of them is science fiction. They are all within our reach. And the fact is, we don't know what tomorrow's innovations will be. Even five or ten years ago, who could have predicted the world we take for granted today? But here's one thing I do know. If there is a ceiling to ICT innovation, we haven't yet it yet. Not by a long way. If we nurture those fresh ideas now, we will grow a forest of future innovation, new solutions to support a strong society. And with the ideas, inventions and innovations that ICT can provide, I know we can get there.